and one of the things that, that most touched me. In, in my 33 years doing this, one scientist said to me, Jensen, because of the work, because of your work, I can do my life's work in my lifetime. And boy, if that doesn't, if that doesn't touch you, well, you got to be a corpse. <laughs> AI really came into the world's consciousness about a decade ago. Started with perception AI, computer vision, speech recognition, then generative AI. The last five years, we've largely focused on generative AI, teaching an AI how to translate from one modality to another, another modality, text to image, image to text, text to video, amino acids to proteins, properties to chemicals, all kinds of different ways that we can use AI to generate, generate content. Generative AI fundamentally changed how computing is done. From a retrieval computing model, we now have a generative computing model. Now, AI understands the context, understands what we're asking, understands the meaning of our request, and generates what it knows. If it needs, it'll retrieve information, augments its understanding, and generate answer for us. Rather than retrieving data, it now generates answers. Fundamentally changed how computing is done. Every single layer of computing has been transformed. The last several years, the last couple, two, three years, major breakthrough happened. Fundamental advance in artificial intelligence. We call it agentic AI. Agentic AI basically means that you have an AI that has agency. It can perceive and understand the context of the circumstance. It can reason, very importantly, it can reason about how to answer or how to solve a problem. And it can plan an action. It can plan and take action. It can use tools because it now understands multimodality information. It can go to a website and look at the format of the website, words and videos, maybe even play a video. Learns from what it learns from that website, understands it, and come back and use that information, use that newfound knowledge to do its job. Agentic AI. At the foundation of agentic AI, of course, something that's very new, reasoning. And then, of course, the next wave is already happening. We're going to talk a lot about that today. Robotics, which has been enabled by physical AI. AI that understands the physical world. It understands things like friction and inertia, cause and effect, object permanence. When someone doesn't mean it's disappeared from this universe, it's still there, just not seeable. And so that ability to understand the physical world the three-dimensional world is what's going to enable a new era of AI we call physical AI, and it's going to enable robotics. Each one of these phases, each one of these waves, opens up new market opportunities for all of us. Let's talk about robots. Well, the time has come, the time have, has come for robots. Uh, robots have the benefit the benefit of being able to interact with the physical world and do things that otherwise digital information cannot. Uh, we know very clearly that the world is, has severe shortage of, ro of human laborers, human workers. By the end of this decade, the world is going to be at least 50 million workers short. We'd be more than delighted to pay them each $50,000 to come to work. We're probably going to have to pay robots $50,000 a year to come to work. And so this is going to be a very, very large industry. There are all kinds of robotic systems. Your infrastructure will be robotic. Billions of cameras and warehouses and factories, 10, 20 million factories around the world. Every car is already a robot, as I mentioned earlier, and then now we're building general robots. And so today we're announcing something really, really special. It is a partnership of three companies, DeepMind, Disney Research, and NVIDIA, and we call it Newton. Let's, let's take a look at Newton.
Tell me that wasn't amazing. Hey, Blue. How are you doing? How do you like... How do you like your new physics engine? You like it, huh? Yeah, I bet. I know. Tactile feedback, rigid body, soft body, simulation, super real time. Can you imagine just now what you were looking at is com complete real time simulation? This is how we're going to train robots in the future. GM has selected NVIDIA to partner with them to build their future self-driving car fleet. The time for autonomous vehicles has arrived, and we're, work, we're looking forward to building with GM AI in all three areas. AI for manufacturing, so they can revolutionize the way they manufacture. AI for enterprise, so they can revolutionize the way they work, design cars and simulate cars, and, and then also AI for in the car. So AI infrastructure for GM, partnering with GM, and building with GM their AI. Two dynamics is happening at the same time. The first dynamic is that the vast majority of that growth is likely to be accelerated. Meaning, we've known for some time that general purpose computing has run out of course, run its course, and that we need a new computing approach. And the world is going through a platform shift from hand-coded software running on general purpose computers to machine learning software running on accelerators and GPUs. This way of doing computation is at this point past this tipping point. And we are now seeing the inflection point happening, the inflection happening in the world's data center build outs. So the first thing is a transition in the way we do computing. Second is an increase in recognition that the future of software requires capital investment. Now, this is a very big idea. Whereas in the past, we wrote the software and we ran it on computers, in the future, the computer is going to generate the tokens for the software. And so the computer has become a generator of tokens, not a retrieval of files. From retrieval-based computing to generative-based computing, from the old way of doing data centers to a new way of building these infrastructure, and I call them AI factories. They're AI factories because it has one job and one job only, generating these incredible tokens that we then reconstitute into music, into words, into videos, into research, into chemicals and proteins. We reconstitute it into all kinds of information of different types. So the world is going through a transition in not just the amount of data centers that will be built, but also how it's built. And today we announced, we announced today that Cisco, NVIDIA, T-Mobile, the largest telecommunications company in the world, Cerberus ODC, are going to build a full stack for radio networks here in the United States. That's going to be accelerated computing infused with AI. AI will do a far, far better job adapting the radio signals, the massive MIMOs, to the changing environments and the traffic conditions. NVIDIA Dynamo does all that. It is essentially the operating system of an AI factory. In the future, the application is not enterprise IT, it's agents. And the operating system is not something like VMware, it's something like Dynamo. And this operating system is running on top of not a data center, but on top of an AI factory. Let's wrap up. I want to thank all of you for coming to GTC. We talked about several things. One, Blackwell is in full production. And 
the ramp is incredible. Customer demand is incredible, and for good reason, because there's an inflection point in AI, the amount of computation we have to do in AI is so much greater as a result of reasoning AI and the training of reasoning AI systems and agent agentic systems. Second, Blackwell NVLink 72 with Dynamo is 40 times the performance, AI factory performance of Hopper. And inference is going to be one of the most important workloads in the next decade as we scale out AI. Third, we have an annual, annual rhythm of roadmaps that has been laid out for you so that you could plan your AI infrastructure. And then we have two, we have three AI infrastructures we're building. AI infrastructure for the cloud, AI infrastructure for enterprise, and AI infrastructure for robots.